What is going on everybody? This is the Fresh Baked Goods and thank you for clicking on another Hell at Loose video. Today, we're talking about garrisons. Garrisons are the lifeblood of Hell at Loose. They determine what team wins and what team loses. Because since Hell at Loose is a game about map control and spawn points, garrisons are the key to this. You don't build spawn points, you can't attack, you can't defend can't really do anything. So usually if a team is not building garrisons right from the start of a match, they are most likely going to get steamrolled because once players start dying, they have nowhere to spawn. So if you're asking yourself, what is a garrison? It's a spawn point for your team that the whole team can spawn on. And this happens every 40 seconds. And that countdown is the same for every member of your team. Each team is allowed eight garrisons total. So which roles can build these? You have the commander, the officer, and the spotter. These three roles are the only roles in the game that can build garrisons. The commander and the officer building garrisons should be 100% of their main task it should always be building garrisons or whatever they're doing should revolve around building garrisons. They should be clearing out enemies to build a garrison there. They should be falling back to build a garrison there. Whereas recon, building garrisons, they can do it, but it shouldn't be their responsibility. They certainly shouldn't be coming back to defensive positions to build garrisons. If they are to build garrisons, it should be behind enemy lines as red zones, but they should be cautious about it and really be working with their commander and squad leaders to see if it's a good idea. And these three roles build these garrisons by just scrolling through their inventory and pulling out the stopwatch. So how do you build one of these? A garrison is built with supplies. A garrison in the blue zone will cost 50 supplies. A red zone garrison in the first two rows of enemy territory will cost 100 supplies. And this will also be blocked off if the enemy comes in with 100 meters of it. So you have to be careful when building these. Supplies can most commonly be dropped by a support player. Every single loadout for the support player has 50 supplies in it. The commander can also airdrop supplies, although this does cost munitions. And really you only want to use this for defensive garrisons away from the front line. Because when supplies drop from the sky, basically everyone on the map can see where they're dropping. The enemy team will know that there's going to be most likely a garrison built where these supplies drop. And finally, supplies can also be dropped by the supply truck. The supply truck has two crates, each containing 150 supplies. Please note, in Warfare, you cannot drop within your first sector of the map. You have to go past the first two rows to drop supplies. And while using the supply truck for supplies is a little bit less noticeable than the airdrop, the big crate does stand out. And if you see a supply truck rolling around, you most likely know someone's going to or from a garrison. So ideally, you always want to rely on support. Your team always wants to build as many garrisons as they can. You constantly want to be maxed out or close to max out. You don't want to have to rely on a couple garrisons. Now, when I say you're going to win because you build more garrisons, it's not just because of the garrisons itself. It's because these garrisons allow you to do two things. They allow you to have map control, which you use by getting around using the garrisons, as well as defending, which can only happen if you have garrisons set up on your defensive points. So now that we know about the purpose of garrisons, how garrisons are built, who can build them and whatnot. Let's talk about where you should be building them. Because while a bad garrison might be better than no garrisons, you can eventually run into some problems down the line due to the limitations that garrisons have. So today, to show you guys where you should be placing these things, we're using a site called Maps Let Loose. I'll put a link down in the description for this site. It's really cool to mess around with garrison placement. And there's plenty of other options to get really, really tactical, but today we're not going to talk about that. We're going to focus on garrisons and let's focus on the St. Marie Dumont map. This is one of the more popular maps. I've generated kind of a random point layout and let's say we're starting on the German side here. So right when the match starts, we have Hugo's farm as our defensive point and we have A network as the point we're going to be attacking. And since we don't have to defend Hugo's just yet, those garrisons right below A network are what you're going to want to prioritize. So this is where placement really becomes crucial. Let's just say you build a garrison right here randomly without thinking about it. Well, sure, you now have a garrison to push in the A network. You're rather limited on where else you can get other spawn points that you can push into A network from. The closest one you'll be able to build is on the right over here. And that's about it. You get two blue zone garrisons to push in the A network from. So let's go back a little bit here. And let's say you move that garrison a little bit to the right and you put it right there in the middle. You can then squeeze in one on the left behind this building and one on the right behind this hay bale over here. You now have three garrisons that makes it incredibly easy to push in the A network. And all three of these garrisons allow quick, easy access 
into a network. It allows you to flood the point and get it captured very, very fast. And then if we scroll over to the left here, you can get your defensive garrisons up around Hugo's. You get one in front of these buildings and also sneak in one back here behind the hedgerow, giving you full defensive coverage around Hugo's while also giving you three garrisons to push on a network. So let's say your team didn't take a network. The other team did a good job of getting there before you. You're now set up to just keep pushing in there. You're set up to defend Hugo's. And also this gives you room to build one on corner as well to defend that sector if needed. And something that people don't realize in warfare mode, all points have to touch, whether it be complete, you know, two grid squares or just corners like here with Hugo's and a network, these garrisons on the corner here become very, very important because they allow your team to not only push in to attack, but they also allow your team to defend. They give you not only offensive cap weight, but they can also provide you with defensive cap weight. So anytime you can build a garrison that provides both those things, those become priority. Those are what wins games. So let's say we did take a network. What now? You could just build a garrison on the point, but that is rather limiting because now you can't build another one very close. You're stuck with just that one garrison and it's probably gonna get destroyed over and over and over again from bombing runs, tank shells, or just infantry pushing onto the strong point. So if you screw yourself out of building garrisons in between cap zones because of bad placement of a previous garrison, you will be at a disadvantage. If the point allows for it and you have some good options around it, like a network, you should always be building garrisons around the strong point. For example, this group of buildings right here and this wheat field over here. You now have two garrisons that are just 50 meters away from the strong point, giving your team multiple options to retreat if necessary, but also allowing your team to patrol these areas around a network and give you more map coverage because it's not just the strong point that needs defending it's all four grid squares around the strong point that act as a cap zone so the further you keep the enemy away the better time you're going to have and again we're keeping that 200 meter placement in mind so if we did want to attack pre-court battery up here you could place a garrison right here in the garden another nice corner one getting right in there to attack and also giving you some defensive weight and this is the idea that you want to apply to any map in the game, any point, and you will be successful. Because what this garrison setup does is it not only provides your team places to spawn, it allows your team to spread out and cover more area of the map. Because a lot of players mistake defending points with just sitting in the strong point, to whereas you need to control all these areas of every point in order to be successful. So let's rewind a little bit and talk about a mistake that happens a lot in this game. Let's say our team didn't take a network at the start, we're here with our basic garrison setup, and let's say we start losing these garrisons. The enemy team does a really good job, starts pushing out, and we're stuck with just our garrisons around Hugo's farm, which is a very common problem in this game. You're gonna lose garrisons a lot. One team decides to go around and flank and build a red zone all the way out here. What you need to be careful of is this garrison doesn't really apply any pressure just existing. And knowing how to lose players, they love to attack, so a lot of the team's gonna spawn here and try and push off of here. But when they push off of here, they're not offering any immediate weight on the next point, and they certainly aren't able to offer any defensive weight. So if you have a lot of the team spawning on these garrisons out here, you're really just kind of hurting yourselves while the enemy team can just push in off of a network right into Hugo's. And if they take down this corner garrison, you will probably lose Hugo's farm because the enemy team will build a garrison right there. And they'll just walk right in and they'll be able to provide their defensive weight and their attacking weight so it is always always crucial to focus on these corner points as well as any garrisons close to the defensive or offensive lines these flanking garrisons can be really really damaging if a team isn't communicating or kind of hurting their players properly it should always be a priority building or rebuilding attacking blue zone garrisons before you start relying on red zone garrisons Another thing that is a very common mistake in this game, mostly amongst new players, is they build garrisons on the wrong side of sector lines. So let's say the team tried their best, they tried to put these garrisons in the proper places, but they end up building them in the six row instead of the seven row to try and defend a network. This is the line I am referring to. They need to be built on this side of the line because what happens is if we lose a network, these two garrisons are immediately lost. When if they were built just a few meters back behind that line, we would still have them, putting your team at an extreme disadvantage. So when building attacking garrisons, it is 
always, always, always crucial to build them in the blue zone. Like I said before, bad garrison is better than no garrisons, but it might come back to bite you in the ass. Pretty much everything said here can be applied to almost every point in the game. Even though the middle point is how you win, you want to treat the system for every attacking and defending point you have in warfare mode. So what I just explained to you, you need to understand that most players know all this already. It's not just going to be you build these garrisons and you go on to win the game. You have to defend your garrisons. You have to rebuild your garrisons. Because the map is so limited with the 200 meter limit and just cover on where you can build these garrisons in general, more often than not, garrisons are built in the same spot every match. So an experienced player will know exactly where garrisons are on almost every map. So it is crucial that you defend your garrisons and you rebuild them when needed. That is how you win games.